The United Kingdom, in spite of all of her royal trappings, is a democracy. But unlike in other prominent democratic nations, British democracy didn't burst forth fully formed in the heat of violent revolution. No, democracy on these fair isles evolved over the course of hundreds of years, as differing groups sought to disrupt the balance of power between sovereign and subject. Hello out there, my name is James and welcome to Super Easy History, the channel where today we'll start to examine the origins of British democracy through the Magna Carta. But first, if you enjoy British history or just history in general, don't forget to go down below and hit the subscribe button and the bell to make sure that you get notified about our next video. On the 15th of June, 1215, in the town of Runnymede, King John of England put his royal seal on a document intended to significantly weaken his own power, the first Magna Carta. Within a month, he was already trying to get out of it. But hold on a minute, what power was he limiting? Well, in 1215, England operated under a system called feudalism, where the king technically owned the country, but he handed out pieces of it to nobles, who could then use the peasants living there to make a profit. In exchange, the nobility owed its loyalty to the king, paid him taxes, and supported him with soldiers. The Magna Carta, or the Great Charter in English, is an example of feudalism... breaking. It was forced upon King John by a group of his own rebellious nobles, collectively called barons, who wanted to limit the immense power held by the king. It affected almost all aspects of governing, but most importantly and most provocatively, the charter forced John to have to gain the consent of the nobility before implementing new taxes, and it created a council of 25 barons with the power to confiscate royal land if they perceived any aspect of the charter to have been violated. Needless to say, none of these provisions were welcomed by the king, so as soon as John was out of reach of the rebel barons, he wrote to Pope Innocent III asking for help. In the early 13th century, the Pope was basically like the President of Europe, but he also ruled over a country of his own in central Italy. Being a ruler himself, Innocent wasn't exactly over the moon about subjects essentially putting themselves above their own ruler, and so on threat of excommunication, he declared Magna Carta to be null and void in late 1215. The barons really didn't care, and by this point they were pretty much done with what they perceived to be King John's nonsense. So they took up arms once again, but this time they went a step above limiting the king. They wanted a new one. The barons rallied behind Prince Louis of France, who they invited to London and proclaimed King of England, starting the First Barons' War. Initially, the barons and Louis managed to hold off King John's mostly mercenary army, and occupied southern England, but in 1216 the Loyalist undermined Louis by reissuing an edited version of Magna Carta, which did bring back some of the barons to the side of the king. However, it was John's death in October of that year and the coronation of his nine-year-old son as King Henry III which doomed Louis's cause. With the tyrant king dead, Louis's support evaporated and Henry III's reign was secured. The First Barons' War was over. Magna Carta was reissued again in 1217 and once more by an adult Henry in 1225, with most of the radical clauses removed. Henry III was King of England for over 50 years, and during his reign he often came into contact with a relatively minor nobleman called Simon de Montfort, who became his brother-in-law in 1238, and who was made Earl of Leicester in 1239. Henry then went off and fought a number of disastrous and expensive wars against France. To pay for them, he raised taxes on the barons. Several times. Ignoring their protests. And by 1258 he had become very unpopular. In that year, a group of barons seized power and forced Henry to make peace with the French. But following the peace, baronial rule collapsed and England fell into instability for several years. Then in 1263, Simon de Montfort, who had fallen out with the king several years earlier over some unpaid debts, led a group of barons in revolt, the Second Barons' War. Simon de Montfort and the barons defeated Henry III at the Battle of Louis in 1264 and took the royal family as prisoners. Henry III under lock and key, de Montfort created a council of barons which ruled the country. It was in that role that de Montfort, for the first time in English history, called together a parliament that included not just lords, but also representatives of the common people. His rule was not to last, though. In 1265, Henry III's son, Prince Edward, escaped from captivity and raised an army. He defeated de Montfort's baronial forces at the Battle of Evesham, and de Montfort was killed by a lance through the neck. Prince Edward became king following Henry III's death, and was pressured into reissuing Magna Carta once more in 1297. 
Ultimately though, Magna Carta wouldn't have amounted to anything, if not for the events that would come after it over the centuries. At the time it was written, it was never intended to be some high-minded, noble, founding document. It was meant to determine who got power, wealth, and status in the moment, baron or king. The idea of democracy was far from anyone's mind. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right in the middle of your screen. Next week we'll take a look at how Parliament and the King came into conflict during the English Civil War, but for now, you can check out one of our other great videos by clicking on one of the links to the left. And as always, thank you for watching Super Easy History.